Hello everyone, welcome to the Vintage Streamer Knits. So I have a life update. It's been really crazy the past couple weeks. I was gonna film outside, but they're doing some sort of soldering at one of the neighbor's houses. And I'm sure you can still hear it pop in every once in a while, but this is the only time that I have by myself to do a quick update. So hopefully it'll be good enough and I'm so sorry about the noise. So if you don't really care about a life update, then this probably isn't the you know video for you. I hope to be podcasting soon. I might, by the time I've posted this, have already have had a video up from my Santa Fe trip, so you can go check that out. Okay, so I won't keep this, I won't make this video very long, um, but basically the gist of it is we lost our home. Um, we rented our home for about five years and we just signed a new lease and about a month into the new lease I was walking in our living room and slash dining room and my feet got wet on the rugs and I was like, oh no, my daughter spilled something. Um, so I asked her and she said she did. So I thought, okay. So I soaked it up and every time I would dry it just enough and then I'd come back in a couple of hours and it would be sopping wet again. And I'm like, what is going on? So I'm not sure why my daughter said she spilled anything. She didn't. <laughs> She's autistic and sometimes there's a communication barrier. Uh, so she might have misunderstood me. I don't know. But she definitely did not spill water on that rug. And I was like, okay, this is weird. So I did a lot of research and basically I was like, okay, it's leaking. Something is leaking and it's coming up from the ground, but we don't have a crawl space below us. It's just, you know, cement under the foundation. So I thought, okay, great. Is one of the pipes underneath the ground burst and it's coming up, but then how did it get through the cement unless the cement was cracked? Anyway, so long story short, we figured out that it was the AC in the garage that shared a wall with our living room and kitchen. And it's the drip pan, I guess, apparently has been leaking and leaking for a while, but there was no way of telling that. And what it did was it seeped through the walls, under the rug, into the kitchen, under the tiles, but you couldn't tell until just recently. So it's it, the complications of this house is is too long to really tell, but basically the owner of the house didn't trust the management company, so he sent his own friend over to look at the issue. And they sent a plumber, an AC guy, and it ended up finding, the AC guy ended up saying it's the AC. Uh, so, so the contractor came into the house, and by this time the house was smelling because more spots in the rug were getting wet. And he pulled the rug back basically our whole dining room halfway and then part of our living room. And the other thing is, I'm sorry, I have ADHD, so I might jump back and forth and make you crazy. I apologize. I apologize for that. Um, water was also coming up in the kitchen in between the tile cracks. Um, so it was just a mess. Um, and when he pulled it back, what looked like was asbestos tiles underneath the house, which would make sense, underneath the rug, which would make sense because, so the house was built before 1980, so there's a huge possibility that there was gonna be asbestos, but I didn't expect it to be under the rug. Um, and then on top of that, around the baseboards, the wooden baseboards that were under the rug, it was rotted. There was, uh, forget what you call it, um, water rot, I guess and mold. There was mold spores on the wood. And the guy goes, hmm, this has been leaking for a while. <laughs> and I'm like, you think? <laughs> so he left and he said, okay, we'll try to figure out a way to fix the AC and he left. And they cared so much about the AC, they were ignoring the fact that there's mold in the house. The rug was pulled up. There were exposed staples and nails in our walkway to our kitchen. I'm like, I have a seven-year-old daughter and that's not safe. And it smelled horrendous. It got so bad to the point where she would cry to go into the house because it smelled so bad. So we were like, okay, so we looked up renter's laws and we got out of the lease because the house was unlivable. So we had to do a really, really quick emergency exit. Um, 
We had to put all of our stuff in storage. Thankfully, my mother-in-law was nearby and she let us stay with her. That's where I am now. And for the past two weeks, we've been searching for a house. And our area is terrible rent-wise. There's not much there. And what there is, is super expensive. So that's pretty much my week, my past two weeks. It's been hard, but God always provides. And yeah, it's, it's been an experience being one day you're comfortable in your home and then the next minute you don't have a home and your stuff is being stuck in storage. Yeah, I know there's a lot of people who have it way worse than we have it, so I'm not complaining, but it was still difficult. Anyways, so we think we found a house and they accepted us and we're working on the lease prospects and I might actually get a sewing room out of this. <laughs> so it's a little farther away from where we live now. Not too much, probably 20 minutes away maybe. So some family weren't happy about that, but what can you do? When you find a good house that fits in this market and the area was decent, you take up on the offer. So yeah, it was really neat is it, with the rental market in our area, houses man in the two weeks we maybe saw three possible houses that would work for our family and then they wouldn't respond back it was pretty bad and there were so many applicants when we saw this house day one we <laughs> contacted the lady right away and she showed us the house and then she kind of made it into an open house and we were the first ones to look at it and we were the first ones she accepted so i was really excited about that because that doesn't usually happen Anyways, that's basically what's been happening in my life. So that's why I'm not been, I haven't been on Instagram a lot. I haven't worked, I had so many exciting plans in my head for my YouTube channel for the summer. I was gonna do Christmas in July and a bunch of other different things. So unfortunately that didn't happen. And my brain is just all mixed up with all of my things displaced. I don't know whether I'm coming or going and I'm having a hard time organizing my thoughts. But I have been working on a project or getting close to working on a project. I'm a Patreon of the Autumn Acorn, Judy from the Autumn Acorn. And what she's been doing is solar dyeing yarn. And I decided to do that. My mother-in-law has a pomegranate tree and I was gonna do the pomegranate, the pomegranates, and then, but then she has a whole bunch of roses and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do the roses. But then I saw this bush, this tree that had these beautiful lilac colored flowers. And I was like, oh, now I'm gonna do that. And then I was just at my parents' house because our bird has to have medicine twice a day. And it's not safe here at my mother-in-law's for our bird because um, of just different different factors. Um, you know, she cooks with nonstick and that's not necessarily good for birds. And my parents have birds, so they're kind of used to all of that stuff. Um, yeah, and anyways, and I was at their house and I saw these beautiful peach flowers. I'm Actually, I'm gonna show you them, be right back. Okay, so Judy from the Autumn Acorn has been solar dyeing and she's inspired me on Craigslist, no, I'm sorry, Facebook Marketplace. I found someone selling a stainless steel, which I hope it really is stainless steel stock pot for 20 bucks so I grab that up and then I have alum coming and then I've picked these flowers so and then I have a ball jar over on the counter there um, so these are the lilac flowers isn't that beautiful I don't know if I got enough but the tree was so high <laughs> I got my husband to climb up well not climb <laughs> the flowers were so high in the tree I got my husband to reach up and grab what he could and he got two bags so hopefully that's enough and then in my parents backyard I think they said it's a gladiola so I'm not sure how that dies but look it it's like a pinky peach so I'm going to try solar yarn dyeing with this and maybe some of my mother-in-law's red flowers reddish pink flowers in her front yard. And I'm not sure about the pomegranate. I only bought three blank, like undyed skeins of yarn. So I have three tries. 
And if I like it, then maybe I'll order more and then try, try the roses or something. Anyway, so I'm really excited about that. If you want to watch Solar Dying, go check out Judy's Patreon. I'll put it down in the link below. So she's been really inspiring me with that, and I'm excited to try it. Thank you to everyone who's been saying prayers for me when I talked about losing our house on Instagram. It really means a lot. I feel very blessed to have a good support system. And while it's been hard, I know it could have been a lot worse. And I'm just so thankful for the prayers and that I have family close by. Because if we had no one close by, I don't know what we would have done. My husband um, had has hurt his Achilles tendon and he has been having back issues. And my back issues and my pain issues and my health have haven't been the best in the pain department. So packing up quickly and moving was very difficult and very painful because we had to do a lot of it by ourselves. And some of my husband's coworkers offered to help and I just felt so blessed by people that I don't really that I'm not really close friends with who offered to help and it just felt so good and it's really made me think about how I need to start thinking of ways that I can be there for other people that I may not be close to because it just, the impact they had in my life for, for helping when they didn't have to. And they didn't really know me that well, even though there's, you know, um, I, I know them a little bit, but it just, it's really special. And um, if you have an opportunity to do something nice for someone, even if you're not close with them, offer. You just, you never know what it's gonna mean to them. And that's a lesson I learned. So I'm hoping to be there for other people more than I have been in the past. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> so congratulations if you got to the end of this video. I know that it was probably boring and very long, but that's basically what's happening with, happening in my life. So I will hope hopefully see you in the next video. And thank you for being patient. I know it's gonna, trying to set up our house and everything. It's gonna take a lot and I'm not sure how how well I can do a podcast super quickly. So it might be longer than expected. But I hope to see you soon. Bye.